two solar lights. One is real and one is a clone. Well, they're both solar lights. But this one is a Nokero light, and I've already made a video featuring this. Now, Nokero was, I say was because they seem to be on hiatus at the moment. It was a light that uh, was developed for third world countries where they were using kerosene lamps, hence the name Nokero. Uh, I featured this in the video at the completely wrong time. I did it during the pandemic, which was just not a good time to mention uh, a product like this because I believe some people went to buy them and... Uh, had their difficulty supplying them at the time. I feel a bit guilty about that. Uh, this is a generic clone based on the look from China. And uh, the differences are significant. Uh, I've, I don't know if you can even get these online anymore. I deliberately avoided featuring it while well, this was still an active product because uh, I didn't want to actually basically promote an alternative that is greatly inferior anyway, so it's not so good. This one uses one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you can barely see them, uh, sun power solar panels, which are basically reverse lit solar panels, super high quality, super efficient. And it's got a single LED inside, a drainage hole. This is good. I wish all solar lights had drainage holes. A single LED, and then it's got a Life PO4, if I remember correctly. Yes, it is a Life PO4, and very odd circuitry to actually drive it. The video about this is quite interesting. It's unusual. There's a, a particularly strange feature that if it detects it's overcharging lithium cell, it turns on the LED to kind of drain the charge or use that energy up. It's an odd way of doing things. But the video is mainly about this, which does not have good quality solar panel cells. It's like got the generic garden solar light ones. This one had a very simple operation. You had a uh, low, you had high, and you had off, and it wasn't uh, turned on and off by solar. If you put it out in bright light, you could still leave the light on. It was just basically so that you had more versatility in using it, because it is actually designed for charging in sunlight and then using for illuminating indoors at night. This one seems to have a standard solar garden light vibe going to it. It's got... Oh, they're loose. Uh, it's got 5mm uh, LEDs. And it's got a switch that can switch between, I'll cover the solar panel, six of them being lit, and just one of them being lit. Um, so let's just get straight into it and take a look inside. I've got a feeling that this is just going to be a standard garden solar light with a switch between either six LEDs in parallel or one on its own just for visual effect. I don't think it's really going to be anything up to the same level as that one. It does at least have a decent enough double A cell. 1,000 milliampere. Whether you believe that or not, nickel metal hydride uh, is, is, you know, that's a debatable thing. Interestingly, I'm seeing that although the middle LED is just actually sat into uh, the plastic with the leads folded between two circuit boards, the other LEDs are mounted in two separate circuit boards here. And I'm guessing that the reason they're two is just to leave a bit of extra space for that cell to go in. So I shall pop the circuit board out, the main one here, which uh, looks as though it's got all the circuitry on it. And I'm guessing... Oh, it doesn't come out that easy because of that. I'm guessing it's got... Yeah... Oh, it's actually, I'm wrong. It's actually got two boost circuits with a uh, different size. No, they've got the same size inductors. That's a bit weird. Right. Tell you what, I'm going to take this out and I'm going to reverse engineer it and we can actually explore it. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete and it's kind of strange. Let me show you this. It's effectively... Two completely separate solar lights in one package sharing a common nickel metal hydride cell. And the nickel metal hydride cell goes straight to a two-way switch. Well, let me show you. Here's the positive connection from nickel metal hydride cell going to the centre contact of a two-way switch. And then either side of that switch diverts to a separate solar light. The solar control chips have a common solar panel feeding them and it's just looped between them. So no matter which way it's switched, it can charge that. What would have been nice in here? Would have been a little diode, perhaps? Even just a cheap silicon diode that would have actually put a charge into that even when it was switched off. It just seems that it would suit that product better. However, there is a strange thing. One of them, the high-intensity setting, has six LEDs. 
The low intensity setting has one LED, but they've both got the same size of inductor, 47 microhenry, which is going to be about uh, 8 milliamps flowing through the LEDs. I would have thought that given that this is supposed to be two modes, it's supposed to be a fairly sort of bright mode for work use and a low level mode for just ambient use. I thought, especially given this is diffused, they could have used perhaps a, a straw hat LED here and they could have used a 220 microhenry inductor and it would have just passed about 2 milliamps through the LED. So you'd have got much longer runtime. This one, they could have actually decreased the value of the inductor to 22 microhenry and it would have I've put about 15 milliamps through the LEDs, which would have given much greater intensity for general work use. Things worth noting. A brief description of how this works in the first place. These are solar garden light chips. They have the facility to basically charge the nicometer hydride cell when it's connected by having a little diode between the solar panel and the positive. And it also monitors the voltage of the, uh, the battery to determine when it should cut off without over-discharging the battery. It's, it's quite a clever little chip. But when it detects that the solar input has reduced below a certain level, it uh, starts pulsing this output. When it pulses the output on, this inductor uh, has a magnetic field put in it. And normally, the voltage from the nicometal hydride cell is a maximum about 1.5 volts at full charge, and it can't find its way through the inductor and the LEDs, so the LEDs won't light. However, when that is pulled to the zero volt rail, uh, this end is positive at that point in time. It's connected to the nicometal hydride cell and it pulls this end negative. But then it turns off again and the magnetic field collapses and this end then goes negative and this goes positive and that effectively adds in series with the nicometal hydride cell and it passes current, it increases the voltage enough that it can pass current through the LEDs. And the amount of energy stored in the inductor at that point in time is what will basically go towards lighting the LEDs. The LEDs, there were two circuit boards. There was the main PCB, which had three of the LED, of the six LEDs on it, and uh, one connection for the uh, single LED. And then the auxiliary PCB had a common negative connection for them all. I'll write negative, or I could write zero volt, or I could write ground. So many different things that they used to describe that, or indeed the little the little block like that that's uh, all these common things used for referencing the same thing in a single rail supply. But um, I've kind of forgotten what I was talking about now when I said that. All oh, right, common zero volt rail. And uh, so it only needs one connection, the main PCB for that LED and uh, another connection. So there's only two wires going across, negative, uh, and then the, uh, the one for the three LEDs here, the other one comes from the main PCB because it's the LEDs just tap directly across them. Uh, that is more or less it. That is what you might expect. It's a generic Chinese clone, not really fantastically designed. It's uh, just a, a cheap copy lookalike that has some of the similar functionality. If it is interesting enough, the case could be repurposed to make a, a more functional light, even just actually getting rid of one of the sides and actually doing that little dive modification and having a... a a different LED in there, maybe even a, a higher power one. But that's it. That is the crappy clone of the Nokero light. Uh, literally just made to have similar functionality-ish, but uh, just be made cheaper. And that's really what they do. Um, and there's not really much else to say about it. So I'm hoping that Nokero are still on the go and that they're going to keep making things. I don't really know what's happening with Nokero at the moment. Um, but uh, this light here, I guess maybe it'll appear randomly on eBay from time to time, but it seemed to have its heyday when it was basically just to provide a cheap alternative to this fairly expensive, but justifiably expensive, um, proper working light. But interesting things. Uh, the Nokera light was quite interesting. This one was less interesting.